Evan, the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from my funky bunker. This week, we're going to use the National Music Center's Instrument Exploration Toolkit to look at two instruments. They are very similar. They produce sound in exactly the same way. So we're going to figure out what makes them the same, what makes them different, which one's easier to play, which instrument gives you the most control over the vibrations, and once and for all, which is the best instrument, a clarinet or a saxophone, scientifically speaking. One big similarity between these two instruments is the source of vibration. Both the saxophone and the clarinet use reeds. Reeds are made out of wood, specifically bamboo. The tip is very thin and then it gets thicker as it goes. This clarinet reed is slightly smaller than this saxophone reed. Otherwise, they're pretty much designed the same way. What's the source of energy for saxophones and clarinets? Air. We must use our lungs to create a flow of air that will make the reed vibrate. Now, reeds don't really vibrate on their own. We have to attach them to a tube. But both the clarinet and the saxophone have a mouthpiece. This part goes in your mouth. These are very similar in design and shape. They both kind of taper down. Both of them have a square shaped hole down here. That flat spot is where you put the reed. And then you want to line up the reed with the top of the mouthpiece, and then it is held in place. Not with my fingers. It's usually held in place with this. It's called a ligature. This goes over the top. Tighten this. So now this reed is attached to this mouthpiece. It's just sticking out a little bit so that there's a path for the air. But if I blow into this, this reed is going to slap up and down many, many times a second because it's fixed at this side and free to vibrate over here. Here's the saxophone version. Again, I put this on the flat part and it covers this hole. This ligature is designed a little bit differently, but it does the same thing. It just holds the reed tightly against there. Wonderful. At this point, to my ears, these sound almost exactly the same, but let's check it in the spectrogram. I'd say the sound print is very similar between these two. So, so far, the clarinet and the saxophone are more or less the same, but let's keep building. The next part of the clarinet is this little guy. It is a neck. You can see it is a little tube. It bulges out a little bit here. On the inside here, though, I'd say there's a hole that's the same size on either side, making it a cylinder. So I've attached this here, and let's see how that changes the sound. Fascinating. The saxophone neck is different in a couple of ways. First of all, we're going to notice that the material is changing. Clarinets are usually made out of wood. I think this one's plastic. And saxophones are usually made out of brass. Another change is this neck curves down. The sax neck also has a hole up top, which is covered by this doohickey. And probably the most important change with this one is that this hole is much smaller than this hole. That changes the nature of this 3D shape. That makes this a cone. Let's see how the cone changes things. Still fairly similar, though we do start to hear some timbral differences coming through. With just this much instrument, I have some control over the sound. Mainly, I can control the volume. I'm controlling that with how much air I blow into the instrument. I do not, however, have much control over the pitch, except a little bit of wiggle in my jaw. Clarinet and saxophone players will use that technique with their jaw to create vibrato. If that was all this instrument was, it would be a little bit boring. So let's add a little bit so we can control the pitch. Next on the clarinet, we have this long tube with all these little bits of metal, and those bits of metal are covering holes. Really, this comes in two pieces. Again, we'll notice that the hole on this side is the same as the hole on this side, making this a cylinder. There is a cone on the clarinet. It goes on the very end. It looks like this. So while the clarinet was in three pieces, this part of the saxophone is all attached together, screwed in over here. And again, we'll notice as this tube moves along, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, meaning that this is a cone the whole way down. We're going to take our mouthpiece and neck and attach it to the body of the clarinet. 
and it transforms the sound quite a bit. Let's do the same thing with the saxophone. I'll take the mouthpiece, attach the neck, and put it onto the body. So one thing you'll notice noodling around on the saxophone and clarinet is you can control the pitch with these keys or by covering holes. Okay, I want to show you something on this spectrogram, my favorite sound visualizer. When I click the mouse, it paints a single line and I can tell you right here, it tells me that's 228 hertz. This is what 377 hertz sounds like or 377 vibrations per second. So it shows us the pitch of a note by painting a line. But if I were to sing this note, it's not only that pitch, but there are overtones to my voice. This changes the timbre. Each vowel sound has a different sound print, and that's the same thing with instruments. So we can compare the brightness of an instrument by how many lines or overtones there are on the spectrogram. I'd say the timbre of the saxophone is brighter than the timbre of the clarinet and a lot of that is due to the cone versus the cylinder. Look, I know I've been saying cone and cylinder a lot in this video, but it's very important. Think about it. We're making a mess of vibrations with our reed and then sending them down a tube. So the sound waves are zipping down, they're echoing about, they're interacting with each other. Sometimes they're canceling each other out and then they exit out here. With a cone, they're still bouncing around, they're still being sent in a tube, but more of the echoes will be reflected out because of the angles of the walls. This results in more overtones escaping and the sound is also louder. So which instrument is better, the saxophone or the clarinet? Clarinets give you more volume control from the quietest whisper to the shrillest shriek. It's really hard to whisper on a saxophone like that. But the saxophone has more volume overall. Clarinet gives you more notes. You can play from a low E to a high A, whereas on the saxophone, you get a low B flat to a high F sharp. The note layout's a bit more complicated. With the keys closer together, it's easier to play fast notes. I'll be able to play notes just as fast on a soprano saxophone than a clarinet. The further apart your fingers get, the harder it gets. Uh, more classical repertoire, more rock and jazz riffs, sweeter. Uh, saxophones are shinier, lighter, honkier, uh, pointier, curvier. Look, I knew there was no answer to which one is better. Better at what? I just thought the conflict would generate more views. In music, like life, there's no better or worse. Of course there's times when the sound of the clarinet will better express the music. What would the opening line of Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue be without a clarinet? You can't play that line on an instrument other than a clarinet. And then there's times where the saxophone is more appropriate. John Coltrane wouldn't sound like John Coltrane if he wasn't playing a saxophone, unless he was Eric Dolphy. Instead of trying to rank instruments, we should find the time when this one shines and this one supports, or when this one shines and this one supports. There's enough room in this world for these two instruments. There just is no better. Now saxophone players, on the other hand, they're objectively cooler than clarinetists. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Centre is a charity that relies on donations, so if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate. <laughs>